In the sixth century, there was a Greek storyteller by the name of Aesop, and he wrote a wonderful story called The Four Oxen and the Lion with a powerful lesson that I'd like to share with you. There were once four oxen who did everything together. They grazed together, they fed near one another, and they were sure to never leave the pack. There was also a lion who believed himself to be the strongest and the world's greatest hunter. The lion will often see the oxen and dream of the day he could make one of them its prey. And although it would have been easy for the lion to subdue any of them, he was afraid to attack the whole alliance because he understood that while they were united, they would be too strong and too hard for him. So the lion had no choice than to content himself with keeping a distance. But every so often, the lion will sneak up on them and try to attack them by surprise. But whenever the lion came near, no matter from what angle the lion tried to attack, the oxen will stand tail to tail. So the lion was always met with horns and this made it impossible for the lion to take them down. Unfortunately, due to infighting, jealousy and disagreements, the oxen began to separate and go on their own to graze in different parts of the field. As impossible as it was for the lion to attack them while they were united, he found no difficulty now that they were parted to seize and devour them one by one. If this is your first time watching my videos, welcome to Conversations from the Heart. I find the message of this fable timely for our businesses, our communities, and our planet. We need to be like the oxen that stood together tail to tail to protect one another. If you look through our uh, ancestor history, what made them survive was not the fact that they had a larger brain or that they were eating more meat or even the fact that they developed tools and even the use of fire, although they were all important components. The number one thing responsible for their survival was their social cooperation. The fact that they could rely on one another to protect the whole. So the moral of the story is powerful because it's telling us that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So when we stand together, when we unite and work with one another, we can better deal with the dangers outside. United we stand, divided we fall, as the saying goes. And this is a powerful message to remember because we survive only because we are a part of a unit, a family, and a community. What this story clearly tells us is that we have to promote cooperation and teamwork at home, in your jobs. In fact, a family that is united is stronger. And I see it in my own relationships. Whenever I have gone through difficult times, having people that care and support me around made the burden more uh, bearable. Similarly, at work, we are all confronted with challenges and threats, but when you develop a culture at work of mutual benefit and cooperation, employees go out of their way to care more, take more chances because they know they're, the rest are doing the same and they're having their back. They know that there are people catching the blind spots. At Embanet, my first company, we developed a culture of one for all, all for one. So from the top management to the caretaker, if the company did well, everyone benefited. Everyone had an incentive to even shut the, the lights off or to make a client a raving fan because in the end, we were all working for one common goal, survival of the oxen, survival of the company. When I was in university, I was exposed 
to the works of English philosopher Thomas Hobbes, who claims the, the natural condition of humankind is one of war. And given the recent developments in Russia and the Ukraine, it's not difficult to think that. According to Hobbes, human nature is one of designed to compete, to be selfish and to guard self-preservation at all costs. But my contention is different. While we are capable of such, no offense to Mr. Hobbes, I disagree. The human nature is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, in short, as he claimed. I refuse to believe that survival of the fittest is the ultimate goal. Again, no disrespect to Mr. Darwin. I choose to have a more positive view of our humanity. You see, it is easy to judge our kind by the actions of a few power-hungry lunatics and then blanket the rest of humankind with their behavior. And if you look through time at the darkest moments of our history, people have been intrinsically good. I believe that in the power of duality that we were giving to do good and to do bad, that we will always tip the scales in our ability to cooperate, to protect and preserve life. So despite all the hatred and all the fear around the globe, I urge you to not lose sight of the good. People are intrinsically good in nature. And the more we come together to expect the good for and from others, the more our world will be able to experience the grace of humanity. Yes, I have faith in us. There are more good people in the world, but they are bad. There are more acts of kindness and compassion that are of hatred and cruelty. This is a time where we need to come together and protect one another and to remember that we are more alike than we are different. And this story beautifully conveys that concept. So let's work together and stand tail to tail to protect one another. Let this story be a reminder that when we quarrel and we divide, we die. I hope this message has resonated with you. Share it with friends and family and remind them to also subscribe to my storytelling channel. Every Monday you will get a notification with a new story that will motivate you, will inspire you, and teach you valuable lessons that you can apply to your everyday life. I'll see you on the next episode.